Pastor Chooks Obina Ogoye. Pastor Chooks is the lead pastor of Resurrection Life Church in Johannesburg. He is a passionate teacher and preacher of the Word of God and has been blessed by God with the uncanny ability and gift to explain and unpack deep and complex spiritual truths in very easy to understand and apply formats. Pastor Chooks has been involved and active in marketplace ministries. He's an entrepreneur and business consultant with an avid passion for raising other entrepreneurs and business leaders. He has taught and facilitated many leadership and entrepreneurship courses and seminars. He is the host of broadcast programs on Facebook, YouTube, and several podcast channels. Living the life with Pastor Chooks, the amazing power of woman. Thank God, it's Friday. Good evening, welcome. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening. We are sharing the Word of God and the goodness of God, the character of the loving God and the loving Father that we serve. Tonight, um, we are on episode 190. Wow, 190. One day, <laughs> we'll be doing episode 500. But tonight is 190, 190. And um, we are on the, on the mini-series, The Goodness of God Makes Me There the Impossible. The goodness of God makes me dead impossible. Today is part five on that, on that contemplation. Uh, if you haven't been, you know, part of the series, you haven't uh, listened to any of the things that I have taught so far, please, can you visit our YouTube channel and just go and find it? I think we, we started from episode 185 or so, or 186, on this, on this talk around uh, making the impossible possible. All right. And um, we, we have shared quite, quite a bit already. Let's get into the word for tonight. Uh, I'm going to be sharing from Mark chapter 5 at verse 21. Mark chapter 5, verse 21 to 24. Then I'm going to jump uh, to verse 35, going all the way to 43. This is going to bless you tonight. It's really, really, really going to bless you. Let's go. And now when Jesus, I'm reading Mark 5, eh? Mark 5, 21. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. I want you to notice what Jairus came to tell Jesus. My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. My little daughter lies at the point of death. But I don't want her to die. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So, so there, are two, there are two pictures here. The sick child who is at the point of death and the child who is healed and is living. Jairus is saying, I left this child and this is the picture. The child is sick. The child is at the point of death. In other words, this sickness is really, is really, really, de you know, deteriorating. Is at, she is at the point of death. I don't want her to cross over to death completely. I want you to come, pray for her, and reverse her and pull her out from the point of death that she is healed and she will, she will live. Do you, do, you, do, you get, do, you get, do you get the picture here? So, so Jairus has made a request uh, to Jesus. I saw my child at the point of death. But I also see her healed and living and I want that. I want that. I don't want her to die. I, I, the picture of her dying, mm -mm, I don't want that. So come to my house and lay your hands, lay your hands, pray for this child. She will be healed and she will live. That was his request. 
Look at verse 24. So Jesus went with him. In other words, Jesus agreed with the new picture of a healed child and a child who is living. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. So when Jesus agreed to go with him, what do you think happened to Jairus' mind? What picture was Jairus holding onto when Jesus decided to go with him? I can tell you now that Jairus was no longer seeing a child who is at the point of death. Jairus is seeing a child who is healed and is living because Jesus agreed to come with him. Why? Because Jesus never fails on any mission that he embarked on. So, so as far as Jairus is concerned, his daughter is healed and living. So this is the picture. So I can imagine Jairus is already celebrating. Jairus is already rejoicing while they are on their way going to his house. So the anxiety of losing a child, he, he doesn't have that anymore. That anxiety is dropped. That anxiety is abandoned. He doesn't have that, you know, apprehension. My child is going to die. No. The, the picture that Jairus has is that my child is healed and my child lives. Please follow, follow, follow me. My child is healed. Step one. My child lives. Step two. That's the picture that is in Jairus's mind. Healed and living. Healed and living. So they are going. The Bible says in verse 25, we're not going there. There was an interruption. A woman with an issue of blood stepped in, blah, blah, blah. All right. So, so let's, let's uh, uh, jump. Verse 35. While he was still speaking, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? So some people came from his house. Some of his staff, some of his relatives. We don't know who these people are, but there are people who are close to Jairus, who are close to the daughter, who are close to the situation. They knew when the daughter was at the point of death. Now the daughter had crossed over to the other side. She's died. She's dead now. Remember, she was at the border when, when Jairus approached Jesus. So while Jesus had, uh, you need to get this revelation. While Jesus had agreed to come, while Jesus was agreed to come, in other words, if Jesus had not already finished and healed this child and this child lived, he will not begin. Because in God's economy, God finishes before he starts. God finishes before he starts. So, uh, and remember, Jesus never does anything except what he sees the Father do. So the Father finished this matter before Jesus started the journey. Jesus already started the journey to Jairus' house. So, in Jesus' mind, this, this girl is leaving. This girl is healed and living. So, while Jesus was on his way to come and manifest what he already has believed for, the enemy was still at work. Ah, you need to get this revelation today. The enemy was still at work in the body of this child, and the child died. In other words, listen, God can be on your case. God can be involved in your case. God can be on his way to the rescue. And it still looks bad on the outside. In the three-dimensional reality we live, it can, be going to, it can be going from good to worse. From worse to worst. While your eyes are seeing worse to worst. In the economy of God, in the dimension of God, is going from bad to good. So, so, so there, there, <laughs> there, there, there are two dimensions of what was going on here. In reality, the child was depreciating. 
in, in the three-dimensional reality, in the natural realm, the child was going from worse to worst, or from bad to worse. So it's a, it was going down. With in, the, in, in, in Jesus' dimension, it was going from yield to living. It was going up. These two realities are occurring at the same time. At the same time. We're talking about the goodness of God makes me dare the impossible. This is, this is so important that you connect with, with, with the revelation the Spirit of God is bringing tonight. Jesus is on his way to raise this child from sick to healed. From healed to living and well. All right? So the child is sick. When Jairus left the child, the child is sick. And, and Jairus wants the child to go from sick to healed, from healed to living. Jesus agreed with that. Jesus embarked on the journey. The enemy said, no. I don't care that Jesus is coming to the house. What I started, I'm going to finish it. This child must die. This child is going to die. So the enemy carried on with what he was doing in the body of this child. And eventually, her organs packed up and she died. So it looked like the enemy won. But did the enemy really win? Did the enemy really win? So people came from Jairus' house to come and tell Jairus that the enemy won. And, and, and why were they telling Jairus that? Do not trouble the teacher any further. I bought the mission. I bought the mission. The enemy has won. Can I tell you something? It is not over until God says so. It is not over until God says so. You, you, you cannot agree with the devil. You can never, you must never, in every situation that you, are, you find yourself, there is an opinion. Satan has an opinion on the matter. God has an opinion on the matter. Who are you agreeing with? Who are you agreeing with? Jarius has agreed with Jesus as Jesus has agreed with the Father that this child will leave. The people in Jairus' house have agreed with the enemy that the child is dead. So, you got to be careful. Please, you got to get this message tonight. You got to be careful of the people around you. Who are they agreeing with? Ay, 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 ay. Who are they agreeing with? You got to be careful who you surround yourself in 2022. If you are going to experience impossible things become possible, you got to be careful who you surround yourself with in 2022. Who are they agreeing with? What picture are they agreeing with? These people from Jairus' house have agreed with the enemy and say, abort the mission. Let the master not come. The mission is failed. Satan has won. The child is dead. Leave the master alone. This year, you got to audit the people around you and find out which picture are they agreeing with? Satan had a picture. He wanted this child dead. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That was the picture Satan had in his mind. To, to, to kill this child, and, and this child is dead. But Jesus came that we may have life, and have it more abundantly. So, so Jesus had a different picture. And that picture agreed with Jairus' picture. Jairus wanted this child healed, and then leaving. So, so Jairus was seeing the plane take off. Satan wanted the plane grounded and crashed. The people in Jairus' house do not understand spiritual things. They've agreed with the devil. And they came to abort Jesus' mission so that the picture 
of what the devil once done will remain. That devil is a liar. You got to understand spiritual things. So when they communicated this news that the baby is dead, Jesus overheard them in verse 35. Jesus overheard them in verse 36 actually. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, Jesus overheard them communicating words that was that was putting a different picture or that wanted to put a different picture in the mind of Jarius. And Jesus intercepted that, that communication. Jesus said to Jairus, do not be afraid, only believe. Why? If you allow the picture in your mind to change, you will not be able to see the impossible become possible. Ah. If you allow the picture in your mind to change, so the question is, what picture do you have of that child? What picture do you have of the marriage? What picture do you have of your spouse? What picture do you have of your business? What picture do you have of your in-laws? What picture do you have of the nation? What picture do you have of the ministry? What picture do you have of, my goodness, you, 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 you cannot agree with the devil. You cannot. Because if you agree with the devil, the devil's wish will subsist. The devil's wish will be sustained and to carry. You will not agree with Satan. You will never agree with Satan. Satan has a picture of you broke. You can never agree with him. Satan has a picture of you sick and dead. You will never agree with him. And then not only that you will never agree with the devil, you got to be careful the people who agree with the devil around you. They are the ones that the devil is going to use to stop impossible things from manifesting in your life in 2022. You got to be careful of those people who will agree with the picture that the devil has in mind because Satan has a picture. You will not agree with them. You will not agree with them. These people came with a with news. They came with 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 news. The child is dead. And what was their mission? Don't let Jesus come through to the house. In other words, let's go and prepare for funeral and bury this child. Let's go and prepare for funeral and bury this child. That's what they came to say. And Jesus heard it. And Jesus says, Jarius, do not be afraid. Only believe. Don't allow that picture. Don't allow that picture. What is fear? Fear is the outcome of a wrong picture you have accepted. When, you, when your picture is obtuse, when your picture, the picture you have, is not in line with the picture God has for you, how you know that your picture has changed is the emotion of fear. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. How you know that you are no longer agreeing with God, that you're no longer seeing what God is seeing, is fear. So whenever you sense fear, your picture has just been changed. Ah, or they are attempting to change your picture. You need to stop it. Every time, your emotions is your barometer. Your emotions is the, is the, is the uh, clock, is the meter that shows what picture you are holding on to. So whenever you see fear creeping in, the enemy is trying to put another picture in your mind. And if you, hold, if you allow that picture to succeed, you will not be able to change impossible to possible. You will not be able to see impossible become possible. You will not be able to see the miracle happen. That's what your emotions. But if you are not trained in spiritual things, your emotions keep going. You know, like a roller coaster. You keep, why, what are you afraid of? Whenever fear is manifesting itself, it's a wrong picture. You've agreed with the devil. Fear is nothing but a, a the, 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 the effervescence, the, the scent that you have agreed with the devil. Let me say that again. Fear is the effervescence or the scent that, the, the, that you have agreed with the devil. Once you agree with the devil, fear shows up. So whenever you find yourself being afraid, being afraid that the bill will not be paid, being afraid that the child will not, will not make it. Being afraid that the marriage will break. Being afraid that your spouse will cheat on you. Being afraid that the business will not succeed. Being afraid that, that you will not get the admission. Being afraid that anytime you catch fear, 
coming up in your emotion. Please understand what it is. The picture that you are you are having is no longer in line with God's picture. Did, can't you remember in the Garden of Eden, when did Adam become afraid? When his picture of God changed. When what he saw of God was different from how God saw himself. When what he saw of God was different from how God saw himself, he became afraid. When he saw God not to be good, he became afraid. God has never seen himself as not good. God is good. God sees himself as good. So when Adam's picture became different from God's picture, Adam became afraid. So every, that's why God said in his word, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of love. Who is love? God is love of power and of a sound mind. So, so when we are in, in love, when we're walking in love, there's no fear. That's why the Bible says, perfect love cast out all fear. All fear. What are you afraid of? You have a wrong picture. And a wrong picture means you've agreed with the devil. You are acting out of certain scripts. Oh, you are acting out of certain script because if you are, if perfect love casts out all fear. If you are afraid that you're going to lose the business, you've agreed with the devil. If you're afraid you're going to lose your marriage, you've agreed with the devil. If you're afraid you're going to lose that child, you've agreed with the devil. If you're afraid that you, you, you're not going to get that job or you, the bill is not going to be paid, you've agreed with the devil. And let me tell you something. Agree with the devil every day is what is keeping you locked in a rut. Listen. God wants to do impossible things for you in 2022. God wants to do impossible things through you. I, I said it. We are not bound by these three-dimensional constraints and parameters no, no, we, we, Bible says he that is born from above is above all. You are born from above. You are above all. Your life is supposed to have testimonies of impossible things become possible. That, that your income can go a thousand times in 12 months. A thousand times in 12 months is true. But if you don't know how to keep the right picture, and walk with the right picture, and you constantly fall into fear. The enemy cheats you. The enemy deceives you. The enemy, you have not learned how to control your internal atmosphere. And victory, dominion, lies in your ability to control your internal atmosphere. Not only that, you need to also learn how... <laughs> Not to allow the people who cannot manage their internal atmosphere affect you. You got to learn how to shield yourself from people who don't know how to control their internal atmosphere because they are impinging on your progress. They are affecting you. These people who came from Jairus' house, they don't know it. They don't know it. They thought they were, they were being sensible. They thought they were being reasonable. But they were working with the devil. They are relatives of, 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 of Jarius. They could be his staff that he's paying money. They could be his relatives. There are people who live in his house. But they were agreeing with the devil. They are working for the devil. That mission to, to come and tell Jesus to stop the, 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 the journey to Jairus' house. Where did it come from? That mission came from hell. They are working with Satan. To abort what God wants to do in Jairus' life. A 12-year-old child is about to be buried. And they agree with the devil. They thought they were doing a good thing. They, they, are, they, are, they are sincerely deceived. And they are working with the devil. Because they don't know how to manage their own internal atmosphere. They don't know how to keep the picture. The right picture. When Jairus left the house, Jairus must have told them, I'm going to go and call the master. Because how did they know? That the master was on the way to their house because the message they came with is don't bother the master anymore tell him to stop the child is dead so Jairus told them i'm going to go and call jesus jesus is going to go and come and pray for this child and this child is going to leave so they knew the mission and here they are working against the mission because they have agreed with the devil 
anybody and everybody who agrees with the devil around your life this year, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will have the wisdom not to allow them to affect you, not to allow them to change the picture that you carry. It can be your spouse, it can be your, your, your relatives, it can be your staff, it can be your boss, it can be your friends. you got to watch out the influence of the people around you on your mind this year. you gotta be, you got to be careful. So this is what Jesus did. When Jesus understood what was going on, these people came from Jairus' house, but they are not working for Jairus, they are working for the devil. These people are not on the side of God. They are on the side of the devil. They want this child to be buried. Jesus realized there's something happening here. You know, one of the things that made Jesus very phenomenal is his understanding of spiritual things and spiritual atmosphere and understanding what is going on in the spirit. Look at what Jesus said. When he noticed how Satan was moving, what Satan was out to do, what did he do? Verse 37. And he permitted no one he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Wait, why did Jesus decide to cut down the entourage? Why did Jesus decide not to carry everybody along? Because Jesus understood what Satan was out for. Satan was out to bury this child. And, and Jesus realized that this, these guys who carried this message... Who brought this message to Jairus? They are not the only ones who are going to be used by Satan. Jesus understood it. Jesus understood that possibly all of these other people around me who don't know how to manage their internal atmosphere, they are also infected by Satan. And I can't allow them. I can't allow them to come with me. Otherwise, making making this impossible situation become possible is going to be frustrated is going is not going to work if if i take the people who see who see differently from what i am seeing i am not going to bet this dream i am not going to be able to raise this child from the dead i'm not going to be able to fulfill the picture that jarius had from the beginning i am not going to be able to fulfill the picture the father has for me can i tell you something there are many of us the father has pictures for us but we have wrong people around us we ourselves we don't understand the principle and then satan infects the minds of the people around us and he's using them he's using them to stop the impossible from happening in your life you got to believe in the goodness of god and then you gotta you gotta watch carefully the people around you. Jesus was a master. He realized this mission that came from Jairus's house to abort this thing, that Satan that came into their mind, he must have infected all the other people's mind here. And he will give them the wrong picture, and we will not be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish. So he says, Don't mm -mm, these guys stay back, stay back, stay back. And he took only three people. Who are these three people that he took? Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Who are these three people? When you study, you realize that these were the people who were closest to Jesus. These are the people who have received his teaching more than any other person. See, see there's a principle of economy, that uh, an economy of revelation, economy of intimacy, that economy of communion that God operates on. Those who receive what he's pouring, he, he pulls them closer to pour more. He pulls them closer to learn, for them to learn more. The Bible says, he that has, more will be given. So, Peter, James, and John seem to be learning and understanding the things that Jesus has been teaching better than the other people. How do I know? Because Jesus pulled them closer. Jesus made them uh, his inner circle. So, when Jesus wants to teach some delicate things, he only allows Peter, James, and John. Meaning, the skill of internal atmosphere management. Peter, James, and John have learned it. Peter, James, and John have learned it. So he was not, they were the only ones Jesus could trust of all the other disciples and all the people, all the multitudes that were, you know, they were the only ones Jesus could trust to maintain the picture, to maintain the picture of victory, to maintain the picture of healing from, from sickness to healing, from healing to living. They were the only ones he could trust that they would. Why? Because as he was pouring into them, he could see that they were learning. 
As he was pouring into them, he could see that they are, they are changing, they are transforming, they are maturing. Maturity, listen to me, is not how many scriptures of uh, uh, portions of the Bible you can quote. Maturity is your ability to manage your internal atmosphere. Your internal atmosphere and refuse to be infected by the people around you. The picture that you have must not be corrupted by the people around you. That's what maturity is. So Jesus felt more comfortable to take along Peter, James, and John for this delicate assignment, for this delicate operation. So he took them. When they got, verse 38, when they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. <laughs> These people who wept and wailed loudly. What picture did they have? They had the picture of grief. They had the picture of loss. They agreed with the devil. They had agreed that Satan had done his worst and they were wailing loudly because they felt defeated. They felt we have lost. They felt we, this situation is impossible. Nothing can happen anymore. They agree with the devil. What did Jesus do to the people who agree with the devil? Verse 39. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Can you see Jesus confessing what he believed? Can you see Jesus confessing the picture that he had? The child is not dead. The child is sleeping. Because Jesus has a picture of a child who is healed. So he's confessing that picture. You got to speak the picture that you have. You got to speak it. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are saying. You got to speak the picture. Oh, you got to speak what you, the picture of the finances at the end of this year. I declare 2022 was a good year. I declare 2020 was is the picture. You got to have that picture. So Jesus spoke the picture that he had. His body, he, 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 he saw the body of this child healed and well. And so he said, the child is sleeping. The child is not dead. He spoke what he believed. <laughs> what that, is that not what faith is? I believed, therefore I speak. I believe, therefore I speak. What are you saying? You got to say what you believe. Verse 40, they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him. Listen, they ridiculed him. When he spoke his faith, they ridiculed him. You got to get ready this year. People are going to ridicule you when you speak your faith. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what ridicule they throw at you. You got to confess what you believe. They can ridicule you all they want. But you, they are going to see your results. They are going to see your testimony. They ridicule the master. These people have mind. How do you ridicule God? They ridiculed God. They said, God, you are a liar. They said, God, you're stupid. What does it mean to ridicule somebody? They make, you know, make, they're trying to make him feel stupid. You, you see, but they, what they didn't understand is that Jesus was a master at internal atmosphere management. That the ridicule was not going to make him shift what he was believing. For some of us, ridicule makes us throw away our picture. We don't want to, we don't want to agree, and we don't want to uh, 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 look, look like we are ridiculous. So, so we throw away our picture and agree with the crowd. You are not going to agree with the crowd nonsense. You are not going to agree with the devil this year. People can ridicule you all they want. You're going to declare your income is going to multiply by a thousand times. People can ridicule you all. You are going to grow your ministry a thousand times. You are going to grow your work a thousand times. You are going to grow your career a thousand times. They can ridicule you all they want. So they ridiculed him, but he did not pay attention. He asked that they be sent out. And he took five people in. Mother, father, Peter, James, and John. Plus himself, six of them. He took five people with him inside. Why did he take these people? Because these were the people who held on to the picture. To do the impossible this year, you got to hold on to the picture. The picture of your faith. You got to protect that picture. You got to protect that picture by sending all those people who don't agree with you. Send them away. Send them out of your life. Protect your dream from them. Don't tell them what you're believing God for. Listen. He entered. Verse 41. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita Kumai, which is translated little girl, I said to you, arise. Verse 42. 
immediately the girl arose and walked. For she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. These five people were overcome with great amazement. But look at verse 43. But he commanded them strictly. Did you see that? He commanded them. This was a serious instruction. He commanded them strictly that no one should know about it. And said that something should be given to her to eat. Why did he command them not to announce it publicly? Not to share the testimony immediately? Why did he command them strictly? Because he wanted this child to recover fully. He wanted this testimony to settle and become established before sharing it. Come on, somebody. Listen, there are things this year you cannot open your mouth and tell other people. Because the picture of you that they have is different from the picture of you that you have. The picture of your outcome, the picture of your end that they have is different from the picture of you that you have. So you're going to keep your testimony to yourself until it is established until it is settled and established because if you share your testimony prematurely their wrong picture may overcome your right picture and bring you back to where you don't want to be so so you got to be careful who you share your dreams with this year you got to be careful who you share what god is laying in your heart because if they don't see what you see they are going to antagonize what you see by what they are seeing of you and it's going to affect you and it's going to reverse your results. Ah, yeah. Did you get what I shared today? This is a very powerful message. You need to listen to it over and over again. You need to share it with friends, family. You need to share it with people around you. You got to protect what you are believing for. Your faith will make the impossible possible. Your faith will make the impossible become a reality. But you got to be careful who you tell what you are seeing. You cannot go with people who are not seeing what you are seeing. Let me say that again. You cannot run with people who are not seeing what you are seeing. So well, how you're going to determine who runs with you this year is to test what are they seeing concerning you. What are they seeing concerning these projects that you want to accomplish? If they express any kind of misgiving, any kind of doubt, any kind of uh, uh, lack of confidence that these things will happen in your life you know they're the wrong crowd you cannot run with them this year you cannot you will need to reclassify them move them away from you further away from you so that their picture of what their picture of what you are believing will not affect and infect and downgrade your own picture and reverse your own picture no and corrupt your own picture no you mean to move them away from you yeah pastor but it's my husband or it's my wife, or it's my son, or are my parents. It doesn't matter. Keep them away. Did you notice that the people who came to share the bad news that the child is dead, Jesus did not take them in to go and raise the child. He kept them away. <laughs> the people who came to share this bad news, Jesus did not allow them to come into the house. He did not. He, he kept them away because... To accomplish the impossible, you need to surround your people, yourself with people who see you accomplishing the impossible. Let me say that again. To accomplish the impossible in 2022, you need to surround yourselves with people who see you accomplish the impossible. My time is up. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. God bless you. I'm going to continue tomorrow. All right. I, 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 can't, I can't go further. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Let me pray. Father, give my hearers discernment to, to know the people that they're going to run with, to know the people to share delicate information of what they're believing for, to know the people they're going to surround themselves with. Because we know that you want to do impossible things this year. And the people who inadvertently, without knowing it, are agreeing with the devil. Lord, today I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch them. People around us who are agreeing with the enemy. Lord, I pray that you open their eyes. That they might, they might deep come from the, the, the camp of the enemy. And come into the camp of what you are doing. And support your agenda for our lives. We pray this. And we thank you because it's done. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. It gets better. It gets even much better tomorrow. You don't want to miss this. Let, make a, an appointment, 7 p.m. South African time. Tomorrow, we are on again. God bless you. Good night. 
There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.